21st Precinct, Sergeant Tierney. Where's that? Somebody is shooting or shot. Yeah? Yeah, well, did you see it? Well, where's the woman? Yeah? Well, which way do they go? Up First Avenue across town. You're in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right, you just wait right there. I'll send the officers right over here. And an ambulance here. Just wait there and show them where it is. Okay. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. It was a warm spring night, and I took advantage of the weather to make a thorough survey of conditions in the precinct in connection with the growing problem of youthful offenders. Riding in sector car number two with patrolman Patrick E. Cahill as operator, I patrolled the precinct from one end to the other to look for possible trouble spots during the coming months of warm weather. Places where potential teenage troublemakers might congregate, certain street corners, candy stores, playground and park areas, movie theaters, and so forth. I had noted several such places for future reference, and at 11.15 p.m., I instructed patrolman Cahill to return to the station house. We were at 96th Street and Park Avenue proceeding downtown when a Signal 30 ambulance responding at 1st Avenue and 90th Street was broadcast. The Signal 30 denotes an armed felony, and all RMP and detective cars in the vicinity are required to respond. I instructed patrolman Cahill to make the run. With the siren open, we headed for the scene. As we neared 90th Street, I saw that a sector car and the sergeant's car were already on the job. As patrolman Cahill pulled into a stop, I could see a small crowd gathered around an object lying on the sidewalk. The object appeared to be the body of a man. All right, help him keep the sidewalk clear, Cahill. All right. Stand back there. There's nothing to see. Police officer coming through. I'm coming through. To get back there. What have we got, DeLuca? Oh, he was shot, Captain. He doesn't look good. He's unconscious. All right, I'm not going to tell you again. Stand back there. How did it happen? It appears to be a robbery, sir. He was with a woman. Uh, Sergeant Tierney has her sitting over in his car. All right, get back. Go on, go on, get back. The back, there's nothing to see here. You, you. Come on, get on the job here. Help keep the sidewalk clear. Okay, Captain. I'll be with Sergeant Tierney. Yes, sir. All right, let me through there. All right, give him a little air. Will you stand back there? We're coming through. There's nothing to see here. Hello, Sergeant. Uh, Captain. How is he? Is he all right? You talk to him? It's all right, miss. Just take it easy. There's nothing we can do now. The ambulance is on the way. Well, really? Yeah. That doesn't look free. A die lying like that. A die. She's up there already. Uh, this is Captain Kennelly. Miss June Nayland. Miss Nayland? Is she going to die, dear? The ambulance will be here right away, Miss Nayland. What happened, Sergeant? Uh, she said they were in a nightclub downtown, but it's village. Really... You ought to go over and see if I can do anything for him. There's nothing you can do, Miss Nayland. I think you ought to sit right in the car. Yeah. Uh, make them out. Walk to where the car was parked. We were going to go to another place, the place on 57th. Uh, when they got in the car, she made them up. Opened the door. One of them had a gun. The moment the gun got in back, the other one forced her to move over and got behind the wheel. You uh, were going to do the driving? Well, it's my car. And he'd already had a few drinks. Walter, that is. Him. It's taking an awful long time. When's the ambulance going to get here? Uh, right away, right away, Miss. Uh, while they were driving uptown, they took the wallet and money off him. Did he carry much money? Well, he always carried pretty much. He seems to call me, you know. He's just visiting in New York. Mm -hmm. About how much? I don't know exactly, but usually he never has less than $1,000 with him. In cash? Yes, in cash. They so stopped the car here, told Miss Nealon and, uh... Walter, Walter, Walter Eridge. Mr. Eridge, to get out. Mr. Eridge tried to pull one of them out of the car. Fired two shots at him. They get back in the car and went off. Which way? Uh, that way. Up First Avenue. Is this First Avenue? Yes. That's the way they went, up that way, up First Avenue. Got an alarm out on the car, Sergeant? Yes, sir. I rang in as soon as she gave me the description of it. It's a 1952 Pontiac convertible blue, light blue. Did you give in the registration number? Uh, no, sir. He doesn't know it offhand. The registration's in the glove compartment. I always leave it there. New York place? Oh, yes. He lives in Chicago. I live in New York. 
I think she's got a sleep. She thinks she's very bad. She won't die. Well, we'll see what the doctor says. She would just have to have a good time. That's all. Just a good time. And something like this has to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Have you known him very long? Oh, yes, yeah, several years. We see each other whenever he comes to New York. Is that often? Yes, we see her frequently on business. Huh? the ambulance. Oh, that's good. She must have took forever. Can we go over there now? I just have to see him. Uh, in a minute. Well, where will we take him? Do you know? In mean, what hospital? Oh, no, Mount Sinai is the closest. He'll have the best doctors, won't he? You can afford the best. Yes, he'll have the best. All right, Doctor. Uh, okay, Mr. Evans. We'll go over there now, huh? Okay. Can I go right to the hospital? Well, the uh, detectives who want to talk to you, Miss Nellie. About what? Oh, <gasps> yes. He has a wife in Chicago. Will someone get in touch with her? I wouldn't want to do it. Yes, we'll take care of it, Miss Nellie. Oh, that's good. I wouldn't know what to tell him. All right, let's go over there. The shooting victim was carefully put on the stretcher by the ambulance attendant and police officers. The first officer on the scene, Patrolman Daniel Ricci, rode the ambulance to Mount Sinai with the victim to secure the balance of the information for his aided case report. As the ambulance was pulling away, Lieutenant Matt King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, arrived with two of his detectives. Sergeant Waters introduced them to Miss Nalen, gave them the names and addresses of other witnesses, and such information concerning the crime as had been gathered. The uniformed officers were then instructed to resume patrol, and the investigation of the case was left in the hands of detectives. I returned to the station house, where at midnight I turned out the platoon for the 12 to 8 tour. During the course of the night, I had occasion to confer with Lieutenant King in regard to the case. He told me that an alarm had been put out for Miss Nayland's car, this one including the registration number. No luck. The victim had undergone surgery at Mount Sinai, and the doctor said his condition was critical. At 8 a.m., I turned out the platoon for the day tour and signed the blotter to go off duty. Shortly after noon, Detective Louis DeLuca was sent to Mount Sinai Hospital by Lieutenant King. He went to the third floor orthopedic section and walked from the elevator to a pair of swinging doors behind which the floor nurse sat at her desk. Good morning. Oh, good morning, King. I'm Detective DeLuca. Are you the nurse I spoke to on the phone? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, Miss Mary is waiting out in the salon. Uh, which way is that? Turn right there and through the French doors. Poor girl, she's been here every minute. I wanted to get her some coffee. She wouldn't have any. Mm-hmm. How is he this morning? Any better? Uh, still unconscious. Does it look like he'll make it? Well, that's not for me to say. Mm. Oh, good morning, uh, Detective. Oh, hello, uh, Doctor. Uh, DeLuca. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. There's a lot of excitement when you were here during the night. There was. Uh, yes. Uh, you won't be able to talk to him. He's still unconscious. Yes, I know, Doctor. I uh, came to see the young woman. I told her to go home some hours ago. Is she still here, Doctor? Out in the salon? Well, thank you. I'll go see her. You're welcome. What do you think his chances are, Doctor? Well, it's hard to say. 50-50? 50-50, or less. Any chance of his regaining consciousness? Uh, not so that you could talk to him. Well, the uh, solarium, is that way? Yes, thanks. Oh, yes, sir? Uh, that young woman ought to go home and get some rest. Uh, I haven't been able to do anything with her. Maybe you can. I'll try. Is she very close to him? Uh, friend. Oh, well... You see what you can do. Yes, sir. I will. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Doctor says you should have gone home a long time ago. I know. I, I can't. That's why I found out he's going to be all right. That was a tough break. Why did they have to shoot him? They didn't have to shoot him. They could have had the money without shooting him. Well, they could have. But well, they didn't. He's going to die, isn't he? Well, the doctor says he's got a 50-50 chance. No, you know he's going to die. Why did they have to do it? The money was nothing to him. He would throw it away. Throw it away like that. They didn't have to shoot him. Why did they do it? We can ask him. Ask him? What do you mean? We had the alarm out on your car. The New York State Police picked him up near Albany this morning. Yes. Uh, Lieutenant King wants to see you. When? Right now. But I should wait here till I find out about Landon. Maybe you can come back and wait after you talk to the lieutenant. What does he want to see me about? I told him everything I know. He wants to talk to you about the two that were arrested. Oh. 
We sent a couple of men up to Albany to get them. We want you to see if you can identify them. What about my car? They got that too? Yeah, they went up on the train. They'll drive back in your car. Oh, that's good. Uh, is this your coat? Yes. Yeah. Don't. They shouldn't have done That's the last thing they should have done, Peter. God is money. What makes them so crazy? Don't ask me. I've been in this job 13 years. I haven't found out yet. It was 12.35 when Miss Nayland and Detective DeLuca left the hospital and headed for the station house. Although I was scheduled to be off duty, I had received a telephone call at my home to appear at the borough commander's office at 2 p.m. for a meeting of precinct commanders to discuss the assignment of men from the various commands to plain clothes work, which consists of enforcing the laws relating to gambling in public malls. In this connection, before going to the meeting, I stopped at the station house to pick up the personnel files of the men I plan to recommend for the job. Oh, Captain. Sergeant? We expect you in today. Uh, who's the clerical man on the job, sir? Uh, Fallon, Captain. All right, ring in there and tell him I want to see him in my office right away. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, left some messages on your desk, Captain. Okay, good. Hello, Captain. Oh, Matt. Oh, uh, please, Sergeant. Well, I understand we got those two who did the shooting on First Avenue last night. Yes, sir, that's right. The state police got them on the road up near Albany. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Yes, sir. Got them in the car and they admit the shooting. I sent Fitzpatrick and Goldman up to bring them in the car back. Uh, how's the man doing, man? That's a good thing. Touch and go whether he'll live or not. Too bad. The doctor told me that one bullet wound in the shoulder wasn't too bad, but the other one in the chest is rough. Okay, let's nail him. Straight on through. Hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Captain. Hello, Miss Nayland. Hello. You met Captain Canelli last night? Yes. Miss Nayland? Will I be here long? I really should get back to the hospital. Well, you go upstairs with Detective DeLuca. I'll be right up. I really can't stay too long. Right. Yes. Come on, Miss Nayland. I really have to get back to the hospital. What about the wife, Mrs. Elliott? Well, the Chicago police made the notification she's flying here. Oh. Was uh, Miss Nayland at the hospital all night? Yes, sir. She must have some feelings about him. Yeah, I'm sure she does, Captain, but I don't know what kind of feelings. Fitz called me from Albany. He said the two boys that got up there told him the whole deal. The kidnapping, the robbery, even the shooting was all her idea. I talked to Lieutenant King about the case for a few minutes more until Patrolman Fallon, the clerical man, came out of the 124 room. I went into my office with Patrolman Fallon... And Lieutenant King walked through the back room and up the stairs to the second floor where the 21st squad is located. He opened the door and was met by Detective DeLuca. Where's Miss Nayland? In your office, Lieutenant. Oh. The floor nurse over at the hospital just called. He didn't die? No, nothing. The wife showed up. She's been talking to the doctor. Nice thing. She got in by plane, took a cab straight to Mount Sinai. I told the nurse to ask her to come over here later. You want to talk to her? Good. Let's go see Miss Nayland. Yes, sir. You didn't say anything to her to do it? Oh, no, sir, not a word. Hello, Miss Nayland? Hello. Sit down, let's... Yes, sir. Sorry to get you back here. I know you didn't have much rest last night. I didn't have any. Have you really got them? Are you sure they're the right one? They were in your car, Miss Nayland. We put out a teletype alarm last night, and the state police spotted the car on the road. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad the world is safe. How long have you known Walter, Miss Nayland? Oh, for quite some time. See him very often. Every time he comes to New York, he lives in Chicago, you know. Yes, we you know. Every time he comes to New York on business, we go out, restaurants, theater, nightclubs. We have a good time. How often does he come to New York? Oh, I don't know. Every month, he's showing us businesses. How long does he stay? You agree with me? Yes, usually. Two or three days, maybe sometimes a week. Well, how did you meet him? Do you remember? Yes, I remember. It was some friends. They had a party, and I was there, and all this came. That's how we met. He's awfully nice. He had a big business in Chicago, and he's really a sweet guy, really. It's a shame something like this had to happen to him. How long have you lived in New York, Miss Nelson? Does it make any difference? We'd like to know. We'd just like to get things straight. I've lived in New York most of my life. You work? No, I don't work. How do you get along? I have my alimony. I thought it was Miss June Nayland. And when I got my divorce, the judge said I could use my maiden name again. It's the way I wanted it. Hmm. How much alimony did you get? Isn't that a little personal? Hmm, maybe it is, but I'd like to know how a young woman living alone with no job can dress so well. That's such a nice apartment, such nice furniture. 
I don't see what that has to do with it. I don't see what that has to do with it at all. How much alimony do you get? $300 a month. Has your former husband been regular in this payment? Of course he has been. $300 a month enough for you to live on? It's adequate. Marilyn, you know a man named Philip Creedy? No. How about Arthur Harrod? No, I don't know any Arthur Harrod. I don't know either of them. What's this all about? I could have right to know you've been me over and asked me these personal questions like I was a criminal or something. Well, Philip Creedy and Arthur Harrod are the two men who were picked up in Albany by the state police. They were in your car. Well, I don't see what that has to do with how much alimony I get or how I live or what kind of clothes I wear. They told the officers who went up to bring them back that you hired them to rob Mr. Harrod. I did? That's what they said. That's ridiculous! They said they met you in a bar in Greenwich Village. You told them you had a date with this rich manufacturer from Chicago. That's crazy! I said you told them and you always carried a lot of money. That's absolutely crazy! You were going to this certain nightclub. I said you told them where you parked your car, what time you'd be there, what time you'd be up. That's not so! I said you told them exactly what to do, where to be, where to go, even to wreck your car so you could collect the insurance on it. That's so ridiculous, I don't even want to talk about it. No, it sounds ridiculous. That's what they said. I don't care what they said. Why would they want to put you into this thing if you had nothing to do with it? I don't know why, but I had nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. It's the silliest thing I ever heard of. It's crazy. It's a crazy lie. Oh. Well, we'll get it straightened out. It won't be hard. I'm so glad to hear that. Now, uh, Mr. Arridge got into town on Monday. Yes. You saw him, you said, Monday night, Tuesday night, and last night. That's right. Whose idea was it to go down to Greenwich Village last night? It was his, Wally. Go to Greenwich Village Tuesday night? We went to the theater. Now to the theater? Well, Get we... Get that, will you, Yes, sir. We went to my place. 21st Squad. On Monday, Monday night? Yeah. Night club. All right. In Greenwich Village? Hold on a second. No, in Midtown. Oh, Lieutenant. Yeah, what? Uh, it's... Now? Yeah, right now. I'll tell you what. You want some... Yes, sir. Hello, Whitey. I'll be right out. Go ahead. Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Did you go to a club in Greenwich Village the last time Mr. Harris was in New York? No. Has he ever taken you to the village? No. And why'd you go last night? There was an ass there we were interested in seeing. Well, who was interested? You or Mr. Harris? Oh, this is so ridiculous. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I refuse to talk about it. All right, we'll skip it for a while. Mrs. Harris is outside. Oh, is she? Do you know her? No. She went right from LaGuardia to the hospital. There was nothing she could do there, so I asked her to come over. I think she'd like to hear from you how it happened. Yes, I think she's entitled to hear from me. Does she know that I was with Walter's time? Imagine she does. I imagine she knows the whole story about Walter and me. I imagine. Oh, all right. You're okay? Yes, sir. Okay. She'll be right in. I don't know what I can tell her. Right in there, Mrs. Allen. Come in, please. Thank you. Close the door, Alan. Yes. Mrs. Eric, this is Lieutenant King. How do you do? Lieutenant King. And Miss Malin. I'm sorry about what happened, Mrs. Eric. Very sorry. I know. I suppose we all are. I just came from the hospital, Lieutenant. I understand his condition is quite critical. Yes, I know. I want to thank you for the interest you've shown, Miss Malin. I heard you were there all night and practically all this morning. Yes, I was. It was very considerate. I appreciate it. Have you known Walter a long time? Yes, for quite some time. I see. I knew you'd understand, Mrs. Edge. You see, he's, he's spoken quite often about you and the boys and the house and all about you. You do. I'm sorry, but I can't say the same. After the two women concluded their conversation, Lieutenant King spoke privately to Mrs. Eridge for a few minutes. Then she returned to the hospital. The interrogation of Miss Nalen was then continued. She vehemently denied any connection with the two men who had been arrested by the New York State Police near Albany. Shortly after 2 p.m., Lieutenant King received a phone call from Detective Fitzpatrick in charge of the detail driving the suspects back from Albany. He was calling from a filling station on the Henry Hudson Drive in the Bronx and informed the lieutenant that they would be at the station house within a half hour. 
After a few more minutes of questioning, Lieutenant King reminded Miss Nayland that she had had nothing to eat all day. She agreed that she was hungry and was escorted to a restaurant on Lexington Avenue by Detective Whitey Howard. I was still at the meeting of the borough commander's office at 2.20 p.m. when the two suspects arrived at the station house. They were taken upstairs to the detective squad where they were immediately fingerprinted and their pedigrees taken. Then, together, they were taken to Lieutenant King's office. All right. So where are you taking us now? Right in here. Uh, what's in there? The Luca, Lieutenant. The Lieutenant, Art. All right, go on. Go on, Art. I'm going. Come over here and sit down. Uh, where? Where do you want us to sit? Right there. Sit down. Sit down, Art. <coughs> Close the door, Len. Yes, sir. You're Creedy? That's right, yeah. You're Harrod. I'm Harrod, yeah. You ever in trouble before, Creedy? Uh, well, yeah. Where? In New York. For what? Where in Washington? Where'd you get out of it? Three years suspended. Ever do any time? Yeah. Where? Elmira. I did 22 months of burglary. What about you? Me? Yeah. Were you ever in trouble? I'm just in the Army, that's all. I, I did some time in Leavenworth. Uh, not the penitentiary, the DB there. For what? For stealing. I understand you two admit shooting the man. Did you? Yeah, we shot him. Then we are. Yeah, we shot him. How much did you get off him? I don't know. Uh, $1,100. $1,100, yeah. Yeah, it was that girl at June got us into this thing. She put the whole thing up to us. Is that right, Art? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we didn't want any trouble. We were just out for a good time. She saw us in that bar in the village, and not the place where they went to get another joint. Tuesday, she saw us. When? Tuesday. What time, Tuesday? Uh, in the afternoon. Is that right, Art? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we didn't want any trouble. Did you ever see her before that? Oh, sure, sure. Lots of times we've seen her around. I, I knew her for years. When I introduced her, Art, didn't I say meet an old friend of mine? Yeah. That's what she said, so. I mean, she put us up to it. I, I didn't want any trouble. I had enough trouble all my life. I want to stay out of trouble. She told us she had a date with this fellow that he always carries around a lot of money, and she'd take him to this place. He'd get a little tight. It'd be a cinch. She didn't tell us we'd have to shoot him then. She said then it's a simple operation, didn't she, Art? That's right. We thought it would be simple. She denies she even knows you. Well, of course she'd deny it. What do you think she's going to do, admit it? She put us up to it. It was all her idea. It'd be a cinch. Nothing to it. Art will bear me out, won't you, Art? Yeah. I'll bear you out. She put us up to. Where's the gun you shot him with? Uh, we threw it out in the parkway someplace. I, I can tell you where. I know just where, don't I, Art? Yeah. It's a fine thing putting us up to something like this. We didn't want any trouble. She gives us a sob story about how she can't make ends meet. Wouldn't be so bad now she's trying to square him out of it. But she's not going to get off with nothing. Isn't that right, Art? Yeah. Guess so. You look at see at the back, will you? Yes, sir. Are you in here, Lieutenant? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, how's the guy today? About the same. I hope he don't die. You'd better hope so. I wasn't thinking about myself. I I just didn't mean him any harm at all. I don't mind somebody getting hooked for something they did, but when they try to lie their way out of it, when you got them 14 ways to breakfast, that's something else. Is that right, Art? Yeah. Yeah, there, there she is. That's her. What are you trying to lie your way out of it for? I don't even want to talk about it. Sure. Of course you don't want to talk about it because anything you say might get you in deeper, that's all. What are you trying to do to me? I just want you to get with comedy. Okay, all right. She's lying, that's all. All right, Phil, keep it quiet. Nayland, you ever see these two before? Yes. They're the two that held us up and shot Walter. Now, you see? You don't mind telling the truth about that. It don't hurt her. All right. She told us exactly what to do and how to get the money. She even told us where he kept it. What pocket? I didn't want anything to do with it. She told us. Isn't that right, Art? Isn't that the honest to goodness truth? It's not. You know it isn't. Tell him, Art, isn't it? No. No, she had nothing to do with it. What are you, crazy? He's still there. He thought up the whole whole idea while we were laying over in Albany. He said when the New York cops get here, let's put it over in the girl and it would go better for us. It was his idea to do that. How do you like that? He said if we could put some of the blame on her, we won't get so much out of it. It would go easier on us if we got to be witness against her. Wait till I get you along. That'll be a long wait. I'm sorry, lady. I didn't want to hurt you. There's enough people hurt already. Thanks. Now, let's go outside, Miss Nellis. How do you like that? Keep your eye on them, Lud. Yes, sir. Guy won't make it easier on them. Go. Well, guess that settles it, Miss Nayland. I hope so. I'm sorry for any anxiety we caused you, but we've got to check these things through. Well, it's over. Thank goodness for that. Hello, Matt. Oh, hello, Captain. You've met Miss Nayland, Captain Kennelly? Yes, we met. Hello. Well, how's it going, Matt? Miss Nayland is just leaving. 
Oh? We've got the car downstairs, Miss Nayland. You have to put in a claim with the desk officer for it. Do I have to do it right away? No, there's no hurry. I want to get back to the hospital. Well, I... I can't say it was a pleasure. Goodbye, Miss Nayland. We'll call you when we need you. Yes. Goodbye, Cassidy. Goodbye. Well, I'm glad she's cleared, Matt. Would have been too bad. Yes, sir. Well, you want to hear what I've got to say to those boys who are wasting our time? No, thanks, Matt. I'm sure you don't need any help from me. First precinct, Sergeant Kenny. What do you mean, robbed? Held up? Well, where is it? Where? 1105 or 1109? Well, who got shot? Who? Yeah. 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 Well, which way do they go? Up, down, or down? And so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone.